Welcome to VIV Today, the daily podcast from the newsroom of Business in Vancouver. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. You know, a federal budget is never easy to create in the best of times. We live in a country with national needs, but many regional and even local needs within it. But in a pandemic, who knows really what we need? Who knows what we can even be expected to raise as revenue to pay for any of this? The federal government has started its annual consultation to find as many perspectives and presumably as many answers as possible. I'm pleased to be joined today by one of the leaders out there sourcing the solutions. She's been talking actually to British Columbian businesses today, the Associate Minister of Finance, the Minister for Middle Class Prosperity, Mona Fortier. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Kirk. This is a, this is the first consultation the country has had like this. Uh, where did you start? Well, thank you uh, for having me. And I think this is a really important uh, interview we're having today because we're inviting Canadians to participate to this uh, pre-budget consultation. It will be probably the most significant investments a Canadian government will take uh, after. So we need to listen to Canadians and know where we should be uh, focusing our efforts. And as you know, our government is, uh, has been focusing on fighting this pandemic and we want we have been supporting Canadians and ensuring that once this virus is defeated, we can invest in growth and jobs for everyone. And uh, we need to put people, businesses and communities at the heart of the economic recovery and improve outcomes for everyone. So what we're asking is where should we be focusing our efforts as our Canadian economy emerges from this pandemic and it can be greener, more inclusive, more innovative, more competitive than the one that preceded the pandemic. So budgets still have a relatively high degree of confidentiality, of course, although in in recent years, governments have signaled a little more clearly about, about things so that there haven't been any really wild surprises. But what's the signal out of the gate about what Canadians can expect uh, arising from these consultations in the way of nurturing them through the pans pandemic's next phase? Well, first of all, uh, Canadians should know that uh, the federal government have their back. That's the first thing, and we will until we defeat this virus. And then we will be focusing on um, stimulus. Uh, there's no time for austerity. So we want to make sure that Canadians can go back to work safely and trust that they can be part of growing our economy and making sure we have great jobs and for Canadians across uh, the nation. So just for today, example, the conversation I had with uh, during the roundtable with stakeholders from the Lower Mainland, they shared many ideas on how we can make historic investments to get the economy back on track once we emerge from this pandemic. And uh, I can tell you that investing in childcare was a priority, uh, building better infrastructure, not only for new businesses, but to invest also in the repair and maintenance of existing businesses, as well as targeted funding for retrograde programs and sustainable infrastructure. And they also shared uh, that they wanted us to take concrete action on climate change because we all know a healthy environment and a healthy economy go hand in hand. So those are some of the um, things that I heard this morning during the roundtable. So, so is this uh, exercise minister an opportunity to quite broadly reshape our national and our regional economies or, or is it to try to just kind of get us back to where we were at the beginning of 2020? Well, that's a ver very good question. I don't think we can be back where we were in 2020. I think we want to be in a better position <laughs> than we were in 2020. And we've learned a lot with the pandemic that if we all work together, we concentrate on where uh, we need to uh, focus to, to create that stimulus and create sectors that will thrive we need to know how do we do that. And that's why the consultations are really a good time to go across the country, meet with stakeholders and businesses, meet with those that were hard, hardest hit, women, youth, low wage workers. And uh, we will continue, of course, to uh, during this, this consultation period to, to look at how we can continue to support Canadians until we defeat this uh, pandemic 
and then focus on where we should be investing um, either in infrastructure like we heard today or also in supports like childcare that was mentioned again today and has been mentioned across uh, the nation that it's needed to help people get back to work. Um, it's not as if we've stopped worrying about deficits and debt, but uh, with a budget like this, is it yet time to worry about deficits and debt in your view? Well, that's a great question and, and thank you for asking that. Um, you know, at this time, can we afford it? Yes, we can. Canada continues to have the lowest debt to GDP among G7 countries. And in terms of when will it stop? Well, our government has been clear from the very start of this pandemic, we will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to support Canadians. Because even experts have said clearly that the best economic policy is good health policy. And the best thing that we can do for the economy is to continue to support people while we roll out the vaccines uh, so that the economy is well positioned to bounce back when we are on the other side. And that's the most important thing right now. We want to get to that other side. And we do see the pandemic with very different impacts regionally on both public health and economic health. So uh, what are the chances that this leads to some shorter term regional approaches inside your budget? Well, listen, one decision we made in the fall economic statement, I think you're aware, is the fact that uh, we had heard from stakeholders in, in BC, especially the business community, to have um, an RDA, the Regional Development Agency, that would focus on the context of British Columbia to you know, work on jobs and, and, and help grow the economy. So that will be a tool we will be able to use to make sure that we understand how the regional realities uh, in BC, for example, uh, needs to be um, focused on. And as you know, there will be one for the prairies and two different uh, re economic realities. So our programs will be able to support those uh, emerging, but also those very important sectors that you have currently in BC. We know tourism, hospitality and restaurants have been hardest hit. Uh, so I'm hopeful that that will be one of the tools we'll be able to uh, work with to create and protect those jobs uh, that are in BC. Now, of course, the last budget was changed time and time again under the pandemic. It had to be. Uh, there are all kinds of programs of support that were adjusted. And yet markets, and I'd say even Canadians themselves, look traditionally at a federal budget as being some sort of document that guides the country for its next year. How does the pandemic, do you think, erode a little bit of that primacy as a document? Well, it's a very good question. And I think that we all know we have uncertainties right now. And what we know, though, is that the federal government wants to make sure that when we defeat this virus, we will have the necessary tools and investments to recover. And uh, we're working right now, as you know, uh, across the nation with stakeholders, economists, and trying to find that space that we'll want to use to make sure that we, uh, we recover from this pandemic. So I'm hopeful that uh, when we present the budget, you'll have a clearer view on how are the next steps uh, that we'll be able to, to take. But until then, I really invite uh, everyone to participate to our consultations that will last till February 19th, either online at um, Let's Talk Budget 2021.ca or uh, to send us or your, or your MP a, a submission to make sure that we hear on where we should be focusing our efforts for uh, the next budget. A couple of uh, quick questions to conclude. Um, so much of the country has been receiving support from the federal government for months now and either income or revenue support. How does a budget try to intersect with that so that we aren't just going to be conditioned to endlessly expect support? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, as you know, right now, we have many emergency supports that have been really lifting and helping businesses, a wage subsidy, the Canada um, business account, uh, the also the rent um, 
supports uh, and for um, Canadians, we've also helped with caregiving uh, support. So I understand that that is emergency um, supports that will, uh, I hope, when we can start recovering, transition or pivot them to uh, mm -hmm. supports that will make uh, us grow our economy more and, and help businesses really relaunch uh, in their communities. So the idea is uh, at some point we're going to have to wean off of those programs, but because of the current uncertainties, we don't know when we'll be able to do that, but we know that we have to focus on the next phase of recovery. And that's why we're working across the country to look at where exactly we are going to uh, invest our stimulus uh, spending or investments uh, in the next budget. And last question, um, you know, a, a crisis often reveals inequity in a society and uh, no question the pandemic has, has done so here and elsewhere in the world. What are, what are you expecting to hear in your, in your consultations about concepts like a universal basic income in Canada? Well, uh, we've been hearing it, actually, and we need to hear uh, those uh, ideas and those um, measures that could uh, build our build, build back better, like everybody says, help us build a, a better country. And we've been looking at how we can um, administer uh, our EI in a different way. I think this is really the opportunity to invite Canadians to bring to the table those ideas, those measures that will help us uh, lift many Canadians uh, that are in poverty right now back to uh, uh, working uh, class and also uh, making sure that uh, we take into account that uh, we have probably a lot of things we need to focus on for the next uh, budget, but we'll have to decide. And that's going to be the exercise uh, that will be the most difficult, of course, after listening to all of the great ideas that we will be receiving uh, coast to coast to coast. All right, I'm not going to expect you to answer this question. All right. But my guess is that a fair number of people uh, in your consultations are asking you, is there going to be an election once this budget drops? Are they at least asking you that? Actually, no. <laughs> and uh, right. I've been really focusing on the pre-budget consultations. Uh, I mean, uh, right now, uh, we are in a minority government, so we have to be election ready, but uh, we are actually putting more efforts on focusing on the pandemic and trying to defeat that. And that's why I'm going across the country to make sure that uh, I hear those ideas and we continue to work together uh, to fight this pandemic and recover from it. Well, Minister Fortier, uh, good to talk to you. Thanks a lot for your time today. For good luck me, with you. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk Thank again. You. Thank you. I can't wait to go back uh, to Vancouver soon uh, when we can. It's pretty nice out here. I know. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Mona Have Fortier is the Minister of Finance and the Minister for Middle Class Prosperity. You've been watching BIV Today. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. We'll see you again.